Hello, welcome back. Today I'm going to talk about um, Vladimir Kramnik and uh, the discussion that he's uh, opened uh, as regards to Title Tuesday results and certain players in particular and uh, the comments that he's made, although he's not directly accusing anyone, have raised some eyebrows. So people feel that he's insinuating that these players are cheating. So there's several players that he's mentioned. One of them is a very well-known streamer from America called Daniel Naraditsky, who is um, currently rated, I believe, about in the low 2600s, Fide Classical. However, he is one of the highest rated Blitz players online, full stop. Um, he's up there with um, Nakamura. Uh, he's up there with Magnus Carlsen, very close to those guys. He's actually ahead of a lot of players who are 2,700 plus um, at Fide Classical. So what Kramnik uh, said is um, Daniel Naroditsky, Fide Classical rate in 2619, played over the board 23 games in 2023, gained two Edo points. So he's saying, well, he's not really much better than 2619. Uh, he played a fair fair number of games, but obviously Naroditsky has never made a huge effort like someone like Neiman in terms of trying to get to 2700. And Neiman managed to get to 2700. Some people were a little bit skeptical about the methods that he used to achieve this. Um, however, he has been quite high uh, rated in the past, but he plays a lot. Naroditsky does not play a lot. He streams a lot. That's a very important point. So he's never made a huge effort uh, to get to a very high rating. Uh, his Blitz 26-39 uh, played over the board 71 games. Uh, see, that is something I question, plus 11 ELO points. Title Tuesday level, he's saying his average was 90.4 over, I believe, is that 10 uh, number? Not very good at counting, probably 10, right? And then he goes on to mention other players. So if we look at, look at Naroditsky's um, ELO chart, so Kremlin said he played 73 games at... Uh, so what we can do is you can click on, so his uh, standard is 2619, his rapid is 2642, his blitz is 2639. If we click on his blitz rating, we see how many, oh right, he has played quite a few blitz games, right. Uh, so in 2024, uh, yeah. So December, he played 13 blitz games, yeah. So Kramnik's right, actually, he did play quite a few blitz games over the last year but no it doesn't seem like it's 73 games right what am i missing so this is up to yeah rapid play rating um yeah i'm not sure how to read oh this is where yeah you've got these uh, number of games so this is the period so we go down and then it goes across um so this is the rating Okay, yeah, so I'm, I'm working out how to read this on the fly. He hasn't played many rapid play games recently. He's played eight over the last year or so. That's not many. He's played, however, quite a few blitz games, and his rating hasn't really increased. Although it's also worth mentioning that when you play these blitz tournaments now, you're often playing against these very underrated juniors players. Um, so that is another thing to take into account. It's very hard to gain rating. Uh, probably for someone like Naroditsky, he's already got quite a high rating. But on the other hand, if he's 3,200 at chess.com, why is he not much higher? You could argue that he is, uh, a lot of people have tried to make this point on Reddit, that uh, there's some people on, on, online uh, that get a boost because they're, uh, they've are they got very fast mouse skills. Although I'm slightly sceptical of that. I mean, he's higher rated than people like MVL and uh, Nepomniachtchi. They've also got very good mouse skills, I would imagine. They've got very fast reflexes. They're very good at pre-moving. I'm sure all these people are. So why is he high rated than them when their FIDE blitz rating is much higher than his? So these are interesting questions, I would say. And I wouldn't uh, easily dismiss Kramnik's um, accusations. The argument I would make against that in regards to Blitz, somebody did post a link to a video, a YouTube video, where uh, Naroditsky was playing Caruana. And Naroditsky played uh, incredibly well. It was a bullet match. He clearly couldn't have been cheating, or it very unlikely he would have been cheating. And uh, he uh, he seemed to be getting the better. 
And Caruana, although he's not probably up there with maybe Nakamura and Carlson at Blitz, he's still a formidable Blitz player and one of the best players in the world full stop. So that, I thought, was quite telling, the fact that he was very good at uh, over-the-board one-minute blitz. Um, it's slightly curious that his rapid play rate isn't higher as well because, uh, you know, again, rapid play is very close to blitz. So, you know, he's, he has played quite a lot of uh, rapid play games um, overall. Actually, no, when you look at his rapid, no, he hasn't played that much, has he? He's played very little rapid. He's come on as 2640 and then he's basically not played any rapid. So he hasn't played much rapid, actually. So I'm wrong about that. I was looking at the wrong table. So another player you could mention as well in regards to this is Bjorknik, because some people have been kind of throwing shade on Bjorknik, saying, well, he's low Fide Classical. Uh, why isn't he higher at Fide Classical? Let's have a little look at Bjorknik, who's from the Ukraine. Probably similar, maybe slightly younger than Naroditsky. Where was Naroditsky born? Nine, okay, he's very slightly younger than Naroditsky, about the same age, both quite young, born in the 1990s. Uh, his standard is 26 -0. A is rapid is 26.42. His blitz, however, is much higher. His blitz is very, 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 very high. He's 27.30. And that's over the ball blitz. It's very unlikely he'd be cheating in over the ball blitz. So that suggests to me that he is just very, very good at blitz. And some people have that unique ability to be very good at blitz. Um, so interesting uh, discussion by Craig. I wouldn't easily dismiss his claims. As he said, uh, he is just, you know, open to discussion, essentially. He's not. Uh, directly accusing people he's just stating you know you could argue that's insinuation and some people have said well look you know you, these people's reputation has been tarnished you're throwing mud around somebody even said if you google this person future employers are going to see this and blah 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 i mean i don't really think i don't think someone like naroditsky really cares about what kramnik's saying i believe if naroditsky uh which i'm sure he does believes he's innocent i doubt he really cares um what Kramnik is saying but what I thought I would do is actually look at one of Naroditsky's games so this is a recent game he played against Matthias Blueboom who's also come under the microscope from Kramnik Matthias Blueboom is a German grandmaster I'm not sure about if I pronounce his surname correctly who um Kramnik mentioned actually on a video he he uh he didn't directly mention him uh that this is there was a player who's who scored quite low down in uh, World Rapid and Blitz, who finished quite low down. But when it came to um, the uh, uh, the uh, over the board, uh, sorry, the, the title Tuesday, he's often finishing very high up. So Kramnik essentially is insinuating that there's something slightly off with this Blueboom character. It's also worth pointing out that Blueboom um i did actually win quite a big prize recently in a uh in an online tournament that was run on leeches and there was like a huge prize it was like a like a i think it was an ad ad gym had you you know this huge very famous youtube character i'm not sure about pronunciation his name uh managed to put put this tournament up and the first prize was it was uh, in Bitcoin, but it was the equivalent of around about fifteen thousand dollars they claimed. So it was a lot of money that these guys are competing for. So I think Kramnik is right to bring up these kind of accusations. However, let's have a look at this Naroditsky game and let's see uh, how accurate that game is. How can we? How can we um, look at the analysis? Um, hang on. Ah, uh, here we are. Add kibitza. Add kibitza. So what I want to do is when we go past the opening phase, what I deem to be the opening phase, obviously. Um, so we go through the game. Naroditsky was black. Can we also, maybe we could also flip the board to look at it from his perspective. Uh, and this was a game. I don't believe this was played on Title Tuesday. I think this was just a game. So you see that Blueboom is a guy who is um, people think might be a bit sus. Is actually quite a lot lower rated than Naroditsky. He's actually nearly two hundred points behind him. So that's interesting in its own regard. And Blueboom is you know rated over twenty six hundred Fide Fide Blitz, I believe. So also interesting. 
Um, so we're trying to run this uh, Stockfish 12, right? So let's have a look at the game. So I think this would still be theory to some degree. When when will we leave theory? Probably around about here. Let's imagine that they don't know the theory here, even though they're strong players. Knight b4, is that one of the top moves? It is actually. It's in the top two. Although the computer says that black is clearly better. Now it's dropped down to number three. So what I normally say is like how accurate my kind of system is a different system. To, it's actually gone up to number one, interestingly enough. It's gone up to number one as the top the top choice. But again, it could be that he knew the theory. Queen e2 is uh, in the top three as well. Knight d7 is in the top three. So my nose is dropping now. Will it get a bump? Let's leave it for a few seconds. There's not much difference, actually. Knight d7 is slightly worse than queen d7. Rook e8 and queen b6, but not much worse. No, it's gone up to top three, interestingly enough. So it's a top three move. Knight b5. Is knight b6, knight b6 interesting? That doesn't look like the most natural move to me, but that's actually the top move. Well, it hit, directly hits the a4 pawn. So knight b5 may not have been the most accurate. You can't go b3 to defend it because uh, you're dropping the rook. So white played bishop d2. Actually a mistake. Bishop d2. And then black very quickly and confidently took the pawn on b2. Um, well, I don't know if he played it very quick. I haven't got the move times here. I'm just speculating, right? So let's just stick to the facts. But bishop b2 is kind of an obvious move. You're grabbing the pawn, right? There's nothing spectacular about that move whatsoever. It's fairly obvious. Even I might have found it. Black went bishop g7. Again, yeah, that's fairly obvious. It's not actually top move. The bishop f6 is slightly better. But again, I think if, you, if you're hitting the top three, you know, a lot of smart cheaters, they might sit there and just go, look, I'm going to hit the top three moves or the top five moves or whatever. I don't necessarily hit, I have to hit the top top move every single time. Uh, if you're a smart cheater, you're not going to go for the top move every single time. The engine, the algorithms are then going to ping you, right? If the top guys are just basically going in there and they're just going to try and hit the, you know, they, they've got the engine running in the background, they've got Stockfish or whatever engine. I've got like quite a weak version of Stockfish 12. I think uh, Stockfish 12, a lot of people use a better, better version. But if they try and uh, hit the top, move every single time um they're going to come undone so bishop takes b4 obviously c takes b4 you wouldn't really count that but it's just too obvious but rook takes and again knight a4 that's fairly obvious Not, nothing special about that knight bd4 was knight c3 one of the top moves <clears throat> Well, no, it wasn't intriguingly enough. It's not coming up as one of the top moves. So already we've seen some kind of mistake by Naroditsky. Um, he didn't play the top move. One of the best moves was knight c5. It doesn't like, the computer doesn't like knight c3 in particular. Yeah, and actually gives white quite a big edge. There's a couple of moves which give white a big edge, neither of which were found by white. Queen d3 or queen c3. Four, actually i think queen c4 the idea is if you take on e4 um then there's a knight c6 winning the uh winning a knight so knight c3 was something of a mistake queen c4 was queen c2 same idea was also strong also if you go rook c8 that's not really going to help because of knight c6 so the best defense after queen c4 is to play rook a3 not an obvious move But after queen d3, it's a bad move. He went knight a4. Also not the best move, but still okay. So one of the top moves. Knight c5. Yeah, top move, but kind of obvious. Uh, I would say certainly for a you know, stronger master. Queen d7. Again, you've got to move the queen. Queen d7 looks perfectly natural. Rook fb1. <clears throat> h6 is not one of the top moves. So, again, that's number two in my... It's not coming up. h5 is actually preferred by the engine. 
yeah, I think for a human player, you'd prefer H6 because um, H5, you think that weakens G5. It's interesting the computer actually prefers H5. It doesn't like H6 very much. It still thinks it's okay. It's not really a bad move. Um, it's just slightly worse than the alternatives. But now the engine of Al is changing. So it thinks it's probably just as good. It's just a question of taste. Knight D2, uh, Rook A1. Slightly weird looking move, actually, Rook A1 to me. And not given as one of the top engine moves. So Rook A1, bad move. Knight B3, not not one of the top moves. It was better to play Queen E3. Knight B3 was a mistake. And in fact, the best move was to just to take. So Bishop C3 is a mistake as well. It actually gives White a winning position. So that's a that's just a clear blunder. Uh, I mean, there was a move before Knight C3, which is also a mistake, but this is just a bad move. So White took. Rook c4, and black played bishop d4, which was not the best move, but it was up there in the top three. Um, knight takes d4, c takes d4, rook takes d4. So you get in a situation where white is a clear pawn up. He should win the game, or at least draw it. But obviously in blitz, different rules apply in terms of speed. And, yeah, this is where Naroditsky comes into his own. We know he's very, very fast with a mouse. So he goes rook c8. The best move is f6. Rook c8 is not in the top three or four. Rook c8 is a bad move. Um, queen d2 is not one of the top moves. So again, accuracy, uh, it might say, well, this game's very accurate. But in fact, when we're looking at this game, it's not very accurate at all, really. I mean, on chess.com, I believe this got a 94% accuracy score. Well, we're actually seeing a lot of mistakes when we're breaking the game down more closely. Not not many big blunders, but, you know, we're seeing a couple of big mistakes by black, several mistakes by white. You know, humans are very weak compared to engines now, unfortunately. And we're seeing that in this game. Rook b8, queen takes h6. Not the best move, actually. It looks like an obvious move. Must be some kind of mistake. e5 was winning for white. So rook b8 was also a mistake, by the way. That was a bad move. Uh, that was also a bad move. He finds the best defense. Queen d6, very good. And the idea is g3. So again, these players... Yeah, if you go g3, I'm going to probably... Yeah, I'm going to go queen a6 and actually invade first. I'll get there first. So he's got f4, and that loses to queen c5. Queen g1. This is a fairly obvious attack. Rook b3. Yeah, this is even I, I would see this one. And then Naroditsky won by checkmate. So essentially, White was winning that game. Um, but Naroditsky stayed in there, very resilient. This is often what these top blitzers do. Um, so I think on that base of that game, I'd have to look at more games on the basis of that game. Uh, Naroditsky does not look like a computer cheat. Or if he if he is, he's doing it in a very clever way because there were a number of mistakes in that game which could have cost him the game. Um, but again, if, if, you, if you are super smart, you could argue, well, I could be sitting there with, with an engine. I don't care if, if they've got a clear advantage. I'm going to turn the game around anyway. But Naroditsky does lose games online, um, and he's not quite up there with Mag Magnus. Is over twenty three uh, thirty three hundred, or he has been quite recently. Um, but yeah, it's an interesting discussion that Kramnik has uh, opened. However, on the evidence of that game, it doesn't appear to be that Naroditsky is cheating. So that is my conclusion. Obviously, you would have to look at an, you'd have to look at. A lot more games with a fine toothbrush. I don't really have the scope to do that on this channel. Although I could do a longer video where I'm looking at maybe large a larger number of games of certain players to really get a feel for where whether but it doesn't look didn't look like a computer game that one, didn't it? It looked like a typical human versus human game, human type decisions with both making mistakes and blunders.